You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to subscribe to the show if they have not already done so. Uh, you can find the links to do so uh, over on our website at quicksurf.com. Inside each and every show notes, uh, inside the show notes for each and every episode, uh, I have a subscribe heading. You can subscribe to an Og Vorbis feed, an MP3 feed, and a video feed that's compatible with a fairly wide range of devices. You can also find us online at youtube.com, uh, blip.tv, Daily Motion. You can listen to us on uh, Stitcher Radio over at stitcher.com and at tunein.com. So large uh, place, a uh, nice variety of uh, places to uh, listen to us online. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode over at Lilliputing. Linux source code for Rockchip RK3188 devices is now available. Rockchip's RK3188 processor is one of the fastest ARM Cortex A9 chips around. The 28 nanometer quad core processor outperforms the chips found in the Samsung Galaxy S3 and Google Nexus 7, for instance. And it's a relatively inexpensive chip, which explains why it's proven popular with Chinese tablet and TV box makers. Interesting. Most devices feature the RK3188 processor uh, ship with Android 4.1 or Android 4.2, but soon you may be able to run Ubuntu, Fedora, or any other desktop Linux operating system on an RK3188 device because the Linux source code is now available. So how cool is that? Uh, definitely uh, take a look at this. I'm curious to see how quick it's going to be before we start seeing stuff like Debian pop up on here. That would be pretty neat. From TechCrunch, your Arduino is in my Android device. Udo, 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 U-D-O-O, I don't know how to pronounce it, mixes it up with an all-in-one solution. For most beginning software hackers, Arduino is hard, and Linux slash Android is easy. Well, I disagree. I think it's the other way around, but still. Uh, the folks at Udo, a Kickstarter project that ends tonight, aims to solve that by mixing the best of both worlds. The Udo device contains an ARM processor, you can get it in dual or quad core as well as an Arduino microprocessor. This allows you to program the Arduino using the tools you're familiar with, including a standard embedded Linux install and the associated command line software. The Udo uh, contains both an ARM Cortex A9 CPU and the hardware on an Arduino Do. Uh, this includes 54 digital I.O. pins, optional SATA connection, and a number of other pinouts and connectors. This part of the board allows users to add all of the shields and accessories associated with the highly evolved Arduino environment to the equally evolved Linux and Android environments. Think of it as a Raspberry Pi you can upgrade. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Uh, still pretty interesting. Definitely take a look at it. From uh, computerweekly.com, inside their open source insider, Raspberry Pi offers free software for newbies. That's right. The Raspberry Pi Foundation has introduced free software designed to get people using the tiny, tiny Linux-based computing platform more quickly. It's called the new out-of-box software, otherwise known as Noobs. It has been developed with first-time users in mind. The reasoning behind uh, it is uh, they, the team that's developing this doesn't want people to put their Raspberry Pi down in horror after five minutes. Partners will ultimately start offering SD cards pre-installed with noobs, but the download link exists for now. So you can download this. The Pi Maker is recommending installing noobs onto a 4 gig or larger SD card, and upon first boot up, uh, users have a choice of operating systems to install, including Raspbian, Pydora, and two flavors of XBMC. This can't get any easier. This is awesome. Definitely check this out, especially if you are a Raspberry Pi user. From the H Open, Marantis releases Fuel 
for OpenStack 3.0. Mirantis has announced version 3.0 of its Fuel deployment tools for OpenStack. The tools are based around the open source Fuel library. Mirantis, which specializes in OpenStack integration, also announced that it has raised another $10 million with Ericsson, Red Hat, and SAP Ventures investing in the company. The Fuel tools are open source, but later this year, Mirantis plans to launch Fuel Enterprise. Pretty neat. Uh, check it out if you are a user. From 4traders.com, Fujitsu has announced Red Hat certified cloud provider accreditation and new capability for migration of Linux legacy Unix applications to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Interesting. Uh, this extension of Fujitsu's ongoing technology collaboration with Red Hat means enterprise customers can now more easily migrate their legacy Unix applications to Red Hat Enterprise Linux on Fujitsu's mature cloud platform, which is hosted in Australian data centers. So pretty neat. Uh, you know, this probably has limited usability unless you are already a Fujitsu user, but still pretty neat nonetheless. From eWeek, Google issues the latest Chrome web browser with security fixes. Google Chrome 27 gets one critical security fix, 10 high priority patches, and one medium priority fix in the latest stable channel update. So pretty neat. So it's now 27.0.1453.110, stable release for Windows, Macintosh, Linux, and Chrome OS. If you're a Chrome user, definitely go suck it down if it hasn't already updated. From virtualstrategy.com, Inside Software hardens Linux systems with UEFI security technology. Inside Software, a leading provider of unified extensible firmware interface BIOS, today announced the availability of new UEFI security features, including secure boot and secure firmware update for leading Linux distributions. This is potentially huge. With computer security becoming a critical worldwide concern, technology such as UEFI Secure Boot is quickly being adopted as a fundamental component in providing some defense against computer attacks. Inside H2O's UEFI Secure Boot implementation allows systems to benefit from increased protection against malware such as rootkits, malicious attacks at firmware, and other system intrusions. Uh, close collaboration with Linux vendors such as Canonical have allowed Inside to engineer robust solutions to meet the security and stability needs for server platforms running Linux. So together, these companies have successfully validated UEFI Secure Boot with Inside H2O and Ubuntu 12.04 LTS and later releases. So, uh, you know, hopefully over time, this will become more common with Linux distributions. I think this is a huge deal. Um, pretty awesome. Definitely give it a check. Uh, that will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at Linux. Uh, over at quicksurf.com. You can go to linux.quicksurf.com, but it'll just redirect you to quicksurf.com. And uh, with that, I will maybe see you in the next week. I've got a uh, major life event uh, happening here in the next week or so so I, I might be here <laughs> next Sunday I may I may uh, take a couple of weeks off but uh, anyway um, I'll see all of you on the next episode and with that I'll see you then